on the hunt for something special. I can't say what it is right now. And I'm not exactly sure what it is I'm looking for, <laughs> but I'll know it when I see it. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. So far, I haven't seen what I'm looking for. This could take a while. I'm not in a hurry. This could take days, even a couple weeks. Once I find it, you'll know about it. I've still got my camera with me today, just in case I see something else that I want to photograph. But we're running out of time, and I haven't even seen a photograph anyway. Kind of in this boggy, grassy area. I really wish I could isolate something in here. I really like the look of it, but I just can't find enough to make an image. There's not enough, not enough subject or, or a pattern or something that maybe I'm just being too picky. Maybe I should just. Uh, shoot this mess <laughs> and see what I get. I think the deer have been bedding down in here. It's quite soft. It's going to be pretty boggy in here in a, in a, you know, a little while, I think, as winter goes on. Ground's really soft in here. On the other side of this, I saw something from the hill that I wanted to photograph, but I couldn't get to it. It's turned into a marsh, and I'm on the other side of what I wanted to photograph. Oh, well. That's the way it goes. If these uh, seed heads on these uh, grasses and, and bushes here were a little lower, I might try to photograph them, but because I had to shoot up on them so much, the sky is going to encroach on the image. It's one of those things where uh, it's frustrating because I, I think there's there might be something here, and I might try to just force a couple shots just to experiment with this. It might be something I can develop an eye for if I see the scene again somewhere else. So I might just take a few sketches, a few images and see where they where they take me. This is where shooting a digital camera is kind of handy because it allows me to kind of shoot into a photo and it lets me kind of experiment a little bit and, and if it uh, doesn't work it's really no, no big loss. This, this wall of grass here is just, there's something here calling me to take a photograph, so. Well, I'm kind of running out of time, but I'm gonna have to try to make a frame in here. to the 85 and although I have to shoot up a little bit the uh, trees in the background are blocking the sky so I'm making a, a photograph of these cattails with a shallow depth of field 
just trying to isolate the vertical lines in, the, in this uh, composition. If you, if you try hard, you know, you keep working at it, you, sometimes you can find something. I don't know if this is a great photo, but I, I do like the lines and the way the lights kind of come in on it. It's kind of a diffused directional light. It's actually kind of nice. This stuff behind me, I'm, I've been working uh, different things on it, different pieces. I still don't think I've found anything that's quite working. I'm trying to use some of the grasses with the seed heads together. There's a really interesting texture here. I'm just not able to arrange it just right where it's just, I mean, I don't mind chaos in an image, but I got to have something that's where I can at least rest at for a little while as it, before it takes that journey or comes back. And right now I'm struggling to find that in this, in this uh, chaotic mess. <laughs> I, I, I'm attracted to it. And then, you know, as I'm always attracted to weird stuff, I really kind of like this. I don't work, work in this environment very often. I, I kind of like it in here. I just, I'm not seeing it. Although this little tree growing up in this grass is, there might be enough contrast with that, that little sticky uh, lines in the, in the uh, main trunk of this little, I guess it's a bush. Uh, these limbs going up in the grass might be enough uh, contrast to give a little bit of structure to the image. And over here I'm seeing a similar setup. Maybe I'll try to work with the, uh, the limbs coming up. See if there's something there. I'm starting to think that what I'm looking for is not in these woods. It's a little thick. I think I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. Another forest, another woodland. Today we're doing something a little different. I've got my oldest, smallest, lightest digital camera paired with my most compact light lens. This is a camera I don't use, I rarely use. If I do, it's just for a video clip or something. I haven't really shot with this in a long time. I've made some pretty good enlargements with this camera in the past, but I'm not really sure how it stands up if I shoot a little higher ISO, because I, I will need that in this darker light. So I thought it'd be fun to take this one out and just give it a try and see if there's still a reason to take this old camera out. On our little daily walks it's it's perfect for these walks its size and weight probably rivals even a micro four-thirds camera once again I've, I stopped by this leaf that I photographed a couple times so far since it landed here it's still here it's decomposed even a little bit more I shot this in film last last time I was out here and uh, this time we're gonna try this crop sensor digital camera old sensor I'm shooting it at 1600 and 2500 We'll uh, get a chance to compare and see how close it is to film and to my other di digital shots from my uh, Nikon D810. And it's nothing original because I've shot this already, but every time I shoot it, it does look a little different. The light's different today. It's got a little more of a shine. I kind of wish I had a polarizing filter. But in black and white, sometimes that shine looks, looks adds dimension, so I'm not too worried about that. But it just gives me a, I know it's not a very original photograph, but it gives me another uh, comparison. Even if I don't make some really good shots today, I need to shoot stuff because I really would like to know if this is a waste of time carrying around with me. I mean, it's time may have come and gone. But my uh, definition of image quality has changed a lot over the last year or two. 
and what I used to call image quality. Now I'm, I, I don't, I'm not measuring my images the same way um, for image quality. Is the image look like I want it to look? If, if it does, then the image quality was perfect or was exactly what I needed. If you measure on traditional image quality, it doesn't mean that's gonna meet those, <laughs> that quite criteria. But is it meeting my criteria? That's, that's the, uh, that's the big one. While I was talking, I, I noticed this leaf here. I might as well make a shot of this bright leaf with water dewdrops on top. Don't really have a macro lens, so I'm not sure how close I can focus with this, but we'll see. This is a 24 megapixel sensor. It's not high res, but that's, that's a decent amount of uh, pixels to work with. In most of the stuff I shoot, that's probably enough. I think I leaned more towards 36 to 40, 45 in that range. I think I would prefer to have a little more of that flexibility to, to crop and, and that kind of thing. Sometimes I like to have a square frame, a square aspect ratio. So if I have extra uh, pixels, it does give me more opportunity to shoot different uh, image uh, ratios. One of the reasons I bought this model many years ago was the articulating screen. I really thought that'd be useful. What I like most about that is that you can close the back, not like that, but walk around with it like this, the glass is protected, when you shoot a camera bag it's protected, and then when you want to use it just pull it out and you can rotate it around or you can use it out to the side. It's super versatile. Very, uh, very useful. I, I, I wish Nikon had gone this route with a lot of their cameras. Just It just felt like they really missed something there. <laughs> kind of looks like winter has set in here. There's not a lot left of autumn. A lot of decomposed leaves on the ground. It's just a few leaves still hanging in there on some of these trees. Not too many. I'm not breaking any new ground here. That's not the purpose of today. Today is to see if I'm wasting my time bringing this along. I really hope it gives me decent results or results that I, I like because it's so easy to bring. It's so light. It just It's just kind of a, a pleasure to use. I mean, it doesn't have a great viewfinder and that kind of thing, but it's kind of small. But I'm willing to to uh, trade some of the niceties of the bigger cameras for the, the size of a camera that's almost the same size as my film camera and actually lighter and smaller than one of my film cameras. So there, these things can be had for almost nothing <laughs> on the used market. They're, they're super cheap. And even uh, if I, I could buy a, a newer model than this one because they made this for quite a few years and they probably improved it each time. So I could, in theory, go up another model or two and get basically the same camera with slightly better uh, noise uh, reduction and that kind of thing. A little, maybe a little better dynamic range. Although, if this works, then you know, there's no really, it's like a free camera. It's just sitting on the shelf. I might as well see if I can put it to use. <laughs> I find the used camera market a very compelling reason not to update to a mirrorless system. It's, it's a really good time to shoot DSLRs right now, or SLRs for that matter, because there's a lot of really, really good 
uh, in Nikon F mount gear for a lot less than it would cost to buy new. <laughs> and a lot of, and some of that stuff is in really good shape. I, I wouldn't argue that mirrorless cameras are the future. What I will say is the future will always be there. And right now I don't I know my pictures wouldn't be any better if I was to buy a mirrorless camera. They really don't offer anything that would make a big difference in my photography. The cameras have been good for a long time. Film was really good. And it still is. And when uh, mirrorless come along, digital SLRs were great. They were great. If I was going to update today, I would probably just go and buy a either a slightly used D850 or maybe even a new D850. They're really not that expensive. You get a lot of camera for for the money. There's some long pro professional glass in the F mount that, boy, you can have for half the price. That would be so much fun to have. Someday, I'll, I'll probably go that way, but I don't. Of course, right now I have mine. I had no money anyway. <laughs> but even if I did, there's just a lot of really good reasons not to change yet. I'm glad people are because that that helps move the industry forward. That helps. Nikon stay in business. I don't have that kind of budget where I can help Nikon stay in business. So right now I need to take advantage of making my money go as far as it can to get the images I want. And that's in the older system. There's a lot of really good lenses and, and camera bodies out there that can be had for a lot of money. Something I've noticed over the last couple weeks is a lot of new fern growth. Something I hadn't expected this time of year. I expected, since we're kind of going into winter, everything's going to be dying off. But I guess because it was so dry and warm, these ferns like it a little cooler and, and they're putting off some new growth. It might just be the a specific type of fern that likes this kind of weather. So I'm finding some of that here this morning. Nori and I are gonna try to get a couple more shots with this camera. We're just uh, on a little walk, kind of in between rain, rain showers. So my takeaway from using this Nikon D5200 is I was really surprised at how well it did. I actually didn't expect it to do as well as I it as the files I was seeing. I shot both RAW and JPEG and I edited both and I was very pleased with how the JPEGs performed. Didn't need a whole lot of editing. Will this replace my D810? No, it won't replace my D810, but there are times where I want a compact light camera. I'm just for the walks and stuff. I'll be grabbing this before I grab the D810. Because I know that this camera is going to produce good results. It may not be quite as good as my other camera as far as resolution goes, but the look is really good. I was able to photograph a leaf that I've photographed over the last few weeks that I've actually photographed with film and digital. And comparing this to the film shot, it was, it was uh, pretty amazing how close they were, how close they looked. The lighting was a little different, so they weren't exactly, but uh, the similarities were uncanny. 
Well, I still haven't found that something special that I alluded to at the beginning of this video. So I'm running out of time this week. So that hunt will carry on. If you want to help this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. If you want to contribute monetarily, I have a Patreon page. I'll put a link in the description. As well as quite a few zines you can preview for free. Or you can also purchase those as a way to help out the channel. So we're going to end this video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.